And welcome to our September edition of Sports Highlights. We're on location today from the Apprentice School football field, Greg Picavaris at Greg Pick on Twitter. Our show runs on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m., and weekends on Cox Cable 47, 517. And for more, log on to nnpstv.com. We've interviewed a lot of Apprentice School coaches over the years. A brand new one for football is John Davis. John, first year, good to see you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, Greg. How did you get involved in football? I guess it started off at E.C. Glass. Uh, actually, I was about eight years old. My mom said, you're not going to sit around this house. And in my neighborhood, what you did, you went out and you played football. So that's what we did. I started at Little League playing at eight years old, and I've been involved with football every day ever since. How did you pick football over the other sports? Uh, I was actually pretty good at soccer. Soccer was my number one at that time. But football it was just something about the passion, the camaraderie, the, having the teammates, being able to, you know, really see yourself progressing in that sport. And it was, you know, I just had, I took a, had a great take into it really fast because I, I turned out to be pretty good at it. Well, talk about EC Glass and your experience there. All right, well, when I came up in middle school in the eighth grade, there was a coach there named Bo Henson, and he came over to talk to us in the eighth grade, and it was like you could just see his aura around him. This is all his blues and, and greens, and I said, you know what? I want to do whatever it is he does. I want to play football for him. So I uh, started in ninth grade at EC Glass, was able to make varsity as a 10th grader, and the rest was just kind of history. It was a good, good, I had a good career there. Now, back then, did you like offense better, defense, or special teams? I was always a defensive guy from day one. Well, talking to John Davis right here from the Apprentice School football field. So lead us up to how you got here, some of your stops along the way. Okay. Well, when I came out of, when I finished my college degree, I took a year and I was a volunteer assistant at Lynchburg Christian Academy under my adopted dad, Wayne Lance. He was the head coach there. So I had an opportunity to go coach there with him for a season. Um, after that, I took a graduate assistant job at Gallaudet University up in Washington, D.C. And I just, I love the culture there. I love being a part of that. And I just progressed. I became Went from grad assistant to defensive coordinator in one season. Went from defensive coordinator to assistant head coach by the next season. Uh, spent eight years total there. Um, actually interviewed for the apprentice job in 2014. That's when it originally came open, was a finalist at that time. They said, hey, you know, you need to go get a little seasoning. So I said, okay. At that point, I had just uh, had applied for a few other head college jobs. Was a finalist for two that season. Um, decided to take a head high school job just to get some head coaching experience in Florida. Went to Central Florida Christian Academy in Orlando. Won uh, seven games, made the playoffs year one. Had a good season. Wife got homesick. We're from Virginia originally, so uh, ended up taking the job at 0-10 John Hanley High School and spent two seasons there getting us back to 500. And when this job opened again, I made sure I had all of my ducks in a row to make sure I got back here to apprentice school. You mentioned Gally, that eight years is a long time. You must have really loved your job as well, but I'm sure you don't miss the traffic. No, I don't. I used to live in Woodbridge, and I drove into D.C. every day. It was anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours every day in the car. So this, I told myself whenever I left D.C., I was never going to drive more than 15 minutes. I live in Newport News. My commute's 15 minutes every morning. How about that head coach at a college football program? you got to be happy, and you hope with your consistency you'll sustain. Yes, I think uh, what we've done, I think, the administration has really bought into my plan on how we're going to recruit kids, how we're going to retain kids. And just they, they see my vision for, you know, three years from now, five years from now, eight years from now. And they've bought into that. So as long as we are able to continue to support each other, I think we, I see ourselves really trending upward. We always talk about during our TV games, five Newport News schools, four in Hampton, one in Gloucester. And, of course, the York County and Pocosin schools, too. And you have a lot to recruit from. Yes, we want to, we've been doing a good job of getting out early. Um, we've we've kind of already mapped out those those guys that qualify for apprentice school academically and who also can swing a wrench. You know, that's it's a fine line that we have to draw in between how we recruit kids because our student athletes, I mean, getting into school here is very difficult. I think that's the most common misconception is, oh, uh, it's a trade school. Well, you have to be really good at math and sciences to even have a shot here. So we've already mapped out guys that are 2019, 2020s who have qualified for us right now, and those will be the guys that we'll be pursuing heavily in the uh, fall and the spring. 
Yeah, because the biggest thing is what's well documented in our interviews, these kids get paid here, but it's about their time and their talent, their treasure, budgeting that time so when they have the football field time, they got some gas left in the tank. Correct. So we, we spend a lot of time where the difference between what I did at Gallaudet and what I do here is at Gallaudet, we spend a lot of time talking about how are you going to pay for school? You got to do your financial aid, doing room checks, doing class checks. Here we spend our time talking about, okay, how are you going to budget your money? How you gonna budget your time? How you gonna handle your nutrition? Those are the type of so it's just a whole a total shift in what the focus is here, as opposed to a, a typical school. That's a great point too, because at Gallaudet, most of it was on campus. A lot of these kids live off campus, mm -hmm. so we have our campus housing over at the Liberty Apartments. So most of our freshmen live there. Our upperclassmen, they all move into different places. Some of them own houses. So again, that piece of it, not having that on campus cafeteria, we. The biggest piece for us is nutrition. You got to make sure you got enough in the tank that will hold you from 7 in the morning to 7 at night. And that's kind of what the, their schedule is during the season. You help them with the fluids. Absolutely. So we're every day, before, we got training table before practice, training table after practice, chocolate milk, Gatorade pouches, Gatorade tablets. We do a good job of that. Right, because it takes a lot of energy to play sports, especially football in the hot eat of uh, any summer month as well. As we're talking to John Davis, I guess the biggest thing you learned along the way was organization, consistency, and time management. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is you got to have your plan and you got to work your plan. So I, I presented when I came in for my interview, my 90-day plan, my 12-month plan, and my 24-month plan. And we've been working that. You know, through my first 90 days, we've seen a lot of growth. We've gotten really ahead of the calendar on the recruiting for 2019. Got a staff hired. Um, we got ahead of the cal oh, ahead of the calendar. So now we can really just focus in on our opponents week to week, week to week. Now, one thing about a head coach, they like to get their own staff. Talk about your staff and how important is it from day one they buy into what you're saying. Yeah, my, um, I had two coordinator hires that I needed to make. I hired Charlie Skolaski from Charleston Southern University down in South Carolina for a specific purpose. I really loved what they did offensively there, and I wanted to have somebody who knew that offense bring that here to apprentice school because I feel like it fit the type of athletes that we have. So I was able to hire him. was very grateful. He was number one on my list. I didn't. He was he was who I targeted. And then as my defensive coordinator, somebody I worked with at Gallaudet for three years, Vincent Brown. Um, he, he and I, we both left Gallaudet at the same time. He was at Campbellsville University in Kentucky, which is a scholarship football team. And I was able to convince him to come down as well. So it's two guys that I'm familiar with, but also run systems that I feel like will be successful here. And that was number one. That was the most important thing. Are you the type that likes to delegate, John, or you like to get your hands involved in offense, defense, and special teams? I'm kind of all over the place. Like, I, I like to check off. But, I mean, the biggest thing about having assistant coaches is you got to empower them to make sure that they have an opportunity to do the job. So what I do is I give them full autonomy at the beginning. And unless they change it, then it, that's how it goes for the whole season. We have small conversations. We, we spend a lot of time planning and – as long as they're executing the plan, we're in good shape. Ideally, the before and after should be the tough part, the practice, the game day. Hopefully everything will be executed. Correct. So we, we spend on a lot of time right now on our install because when you have two new coordinators, everything is foreign, terminology is different. So we're really you start from ground zero. So we've started from ground zero, building, 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 and with the hope being that you know we have enough install for week one and to be able to go out and get, out, get after it. Now, as far as repetition, that's still important? Correct. So we spend – for us, offensively, defensively, that's a good bit of our time. Well, let's talk about next the roster. How's the roster look like? How's it shaping out? How many will you have on game day, the first game? Uh, game one, we'll have 70 when we go down to Greensboro, and that's kind of where we hope to hover around that for the season. I think it's pretty nice, too, that you're on the road the first game to get away, take the pressure off, kind of play loosey-goosey a little bit. Yeah, for us especially, it just gives us a little bit more control over the schedule. When we're playing at home, you know, a lot of factors happen. When, I, when we're playing on the road, you know, we're traveling. We know what, the, you know, we're able to feed them. We know what, they, what time they went to bed, what time they got down. It's just I always have preferred traveling as a college football coach, but in this scenario, it makes it even better because you got a little bit more control over the schedule. Right. Talking to uh, John Davis, he's the head football Football coach of the Prentice School, Greg Bickavaris. Glad you're with us at Greg Bick. This is year one for John, and hopefully he stays around for a long, long time. The next question is your roster. How's the roster shaping out? Do you like it? And do you have any guys that go both ways? Uh, we have no guys that are going both ways. Um, we're really, we were really excited about the, the the tailback stable that we inherited when we got here. I mean, we got three guys on this roster that have already rushed for. They've had multiple hundred yard games, and we got all three of those guys in the backfield. And we were able to bring in a couple of other guys that we just feel like, okay, we have some guys that can really carry the football. And offensively, is going to really be dictated on how fast the offensive line can jail um, behind a new playbook. 
That's a, my opinion, John. I always talk about it during high school football, Nate and I that do the games, that even though the rosters aren't as deep, it's very difficult for a kid from the freshman year to a senior year to play both ways because by the time the third quarter starts, he might be out of gas. You're right. So we, you know, we, we're, we've been lucky enough, we've been blessed enough that we have enough athletes on both sides of the ball. And we will have some special situations where you may see one or guy, one guy here or there play both ways just a little pr- package-wise. But the hope is that we're able to you practice more efficiently when you don't have two-way players. How many of the games on the schedule were you able to kind of like handpick yourself with the AD or was a lot of it already set in place? Uh, when I got here, the schedule was already set in place, so it was already done. We're kind of working on the 2020-2021 schedule to be more focused on the type of roster we plan on being at as opposed to where we are right now. So, again, talking about working your plan, working those steps. Yeah, plan your work, work your plan. All right, let's talk about this field right here. Sure. What do you think about this field? Do you like the turf and do you like the conditions? I like being able to say we're a throwback field. I think we got the best grass field in all of the 757. I don't think anybody's is, is as well manicured as ours. We spend a lot of time making sure that it looks good. Um, I think we have one of the best game day setups in the area. You know, during the games, we had the tent set up and the jump, the bouncy houses. It really feels like college football right here in our backyard. And I really, I really think we do a really good job of, of showcasing that. Not many teams have a, an interstate audience. <laughs> You're right. So, guy, when the, when the traffic is up during practice, we get a lot of extra eyes, and we do enjoy that too. All right, we're talking to John Davis. Final few moments. What are your goals for year one? I know uh, coaches are creatures of habit. They like consistency. One game at a time. What's the what's the goal? For us, we just want to put our blinders on and just focus on what's in front of us. You know, not get too far ahead of us. Not worry about anything besides the game that's in front of us and the, and the, the day of practice that's in front of us. And that's it. We live in a social media world. These are kids. They have a lot more access than you and I did when we were growing up. Talk about distractions. How do you get rid of distractions? I think it's a blessing and a curse. I think the biggest thing for us is we we have our social media policy, but at the same time, we give them their freedom to be able. We educate as, a, as opposed to eliminate. So instead of saying, hey, I don't want you to have social media, this is how you should use it. This is how we can come across. Because sometimes it can be a big motivating factor and also really helps us on the road we're, we're recruiting as well. What type of recruit are you looking for? Uh, right now we're looking for guys that we want football players first. So we don't. I'm not concerned about height, weight, all, position. At this point, we're looking for football players first and then guys that can handle the academic workload here. So guys that are B's are better in all their maths and sciences, guys that do really well on their term paper, and guys that have shown some time management. You know, we don't want to see a lot of absences on the transcripts because that's not going to work here. We also want to see a lot of guys that have played a, played a lot of football, guys that aren't just, you know, newcomers because we don't have as much time to teach. Right, but you still want to try to mold them in your own way, kind of. Correct. So we want guys that are just that that have been coached well by their high school coaches, and that's the number one recommendation we get. If you, if he's done a good job for four years there, he's done well academically, done well on the football field, then those are the type of guys we want to get after. And final question: What advice would you have to somebody that wants to play football for the first time, even little league football? I would say go out there and really try to find some fun in it. Uh, football can be a grind; it's year round. Go out there, and have some fun, especially if you're young. Go out there and make make some friends and have some fun. The game and fall in love with the game, fall in love with the process of getting better. Very good. That's John Davis right there, brand new football coach at the Apprentice School in Newport News. We'll be recruiting a lot of the Newport News school kids. We want to see them get there at the college level. John, all the best. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Very good. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more sports highlights after these messages. We're at the Apprentice School football field. Next, we're going to Hampton. Future Fitness with Alexis. Tune in weekdays 6.30 a.m., Mondays 7.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. And welcome back to our second segment of Sports Highlights, our September edition from Hampton University. Hope you enjoyed our first segment from the Apprentice School football field. Now the head football coach at Hampton in his first year. Let's welcome Robert Prunty. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Talk about your background in football. You even played here for a couple of years. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I started in Little League. Uh, I, you know, the coach had us together. We were little small guys running around. But what I liked about it was the team concept. And then I got to know other players. I made friends. And, when it, and I, I was like, well, I'm making friends here. My mother enjoyed me going out playing. 
And, and it, just, it just was the great team concept that drew me to football. And then after that, I went on to play at Chatham High School, and I left Chatham High School my junior year and went to Hargrave Military Academy, and I played at Hargrave Military Academy. I played linebacker, and then I came to Hampton University and played, and I played here for two years. Then I transferred to Alabama A&M and played football. So I was a linebacker. I was a decent player, and I just enjoyed the game. But the thing that really, really stays, stands out to me is the team concept of working together with your teammates. Let's talk about that, too, because I interviewed you back on the radio back earlier this year. Everything was being put on the table, your staff, everything coming to fruition. Now it's game time, so all the fruits of your labor are here. Well, yes, it has, and I tell you, I thank God for that because it was a, it was a crunch time for me because I came in here in December. You know, the first thing I had to do is recruit the players that were here. You know, a lot of times you guys get a job and they go out there looking for players, but you don't realize you can lose the players within the team. So it was very vital that I went in here and then I recruited the guys that was here, got a good relationship with him, with them. And then I went outside and started recruiting the players from the outside. And we were very fortunate. You know, we, we come up with, we got 58 new players along with, you know, the old guys together. So we, we right now, we got 100 players on the team. Going into September, are you happy with everything in place from an offense, defense, and special team standpoint? I'm very happy. I love what the coaching staff is doing on defense. I love what the coaching staff is doing on offense. And I love what the coaching staff is doing on special teams. I think we're coming together. We're, we're creating a culture that I want to see here, and the guys are working hard. We're talking to Robert Prunty, brand-new head football coach at Hampton Pirates on their beautiful field as well. Let's talk about this turf. Oh, great turf. I, I think, you know, I was looking at it. It reminds me a lot of the turf we had at Texas Tech. You know, almost similar to the, the turf that you, you, when you look around, some of the NFL teams have it. I mean, Hampton has did a great job with their facilities, especially the football field. It's really nice. It's, it's nice turf. I mean, it holds good. It, it gives enough where you, you know, don't see a lot of ACL tires and different things like that. Absolutely. It's a beautiful turf. You mentioned Texas Tech. Talk about some of your stops along the way. You've had a lot of stops. Yeah, I have. And, you know, the thing, I started with Gretna High School, and they were 0-44. and four to four. I went from Gretna High School on to, um, to Hargrave Military Academy, which was a postgraduate team, and I, I coached there for about 10 years. And I left there and went to Texas Tech University, and I left Texas Tech and went to Cincinnati. Then I left Cincinnati and, and went on to East Carolina. So I've, I've been very fortunate to get some good jobs, and I've worked with some good people. So God has blessed me in that aspect. You've been in some major Division I schools. I guess you're trying to bring some of that flavor to Hampton, which is also Division I. Yeah, and, and, and once again, we got some good players here. We, we got some great Division I players here. The guys work hard. I mean, I love Hampton. I, I, I love the environment. I love what Dr. Wim Harvey have created here, his vision, you know, not only just with football, but also all the other sports and, of course, the academic part of it, you know, working together as a team. I guess it all starts off with the schedule as well. Yeah, it does. And I tell you, that that credit goes to our athletic director, Eugene Marsh. He did an outstanding job, and it goes back to the relationships that he had with, with other athletic directors. And I like the schedule. I think it's, it starts off, you know, really heavy. We open up with some tough teams. You know, Shaw University is going to come. That's the first game. You don't know what to expect. You know, they're going to play hard, but when then the next game, you look into it, you got Mama, which is a playoff team. Then you got Tennessee State, and then, then you come in there with Northern Iowa, which is a nationally ranked team. So we got a tough schedule, and then you get Charleston Southern. So it's a great schedule, but once again, all that credit goes to our athletic director, Eugene Marsh, and his relationship with all the athletic directors. I thought that was an outstanding job by Mr. Marsh. Yeah, because some people thought the schedule would be tough, but you look at the schedule, it's really good. You're a brand-new coach, first-year program for yourself here in Hampton, and you've got a schedule that's kind of unknown, so it's kind of like you're all learning to swim together. Yeah, exactly, and you're jumping right into it. It's no – I mean – it doesn't matter. I treat every game the same. The players, I keep iterating to them. We got to play every game the same. So we got to line up no matter what, and we got to play, and we got to play hard. But I don't get into that schedule and stuff. I leave that to the athletic director. How about the roster? Are you pleased with that? Offense, defense, special teams, and players coming off the bench too. Well, I'm very pleased with it. Coming in here, you know, I, one of the biggest things was not having enough depth on the defensive line. In the spring ball, we only had five defensive linemen, and now we're in camp and we have 22. So we have went out and recruited. And that, and that credit goes to the coaching staff. The coaching staff have did an outstanding job on both the offensive side, the defensive side, and along with our special teams. I like the depth. I like this football team. Now, with that depth and the offense, the defense, special teams, you've got a staff that you know very well. They've all bought into your system. Do you like to delegate as well? Yeah, I love this. I love this staff. And my thing is, is that I don't. You don't hire people you don't trust. And I, I had a prior relationship with everybody that's on this staff. 
you know, I don't go around and micromanage coaches. I let them do the job because I think the beautiful part of coaching is is to let them show themselves and express themselves and build those relationships with the players. So I love this staff. I think they're doing an outstanding job. I'm 100% behind them on, the, on everything they do on the football field and off the field. These are good men I, that I hired. We're talking to Robert Prunty, brand new head football coach with the Pirates at Hampton University. Greg Bickavaris at Greg Bick on Twitter. And you talk about uh, what else is going on for year one. Every game is 60 minutes. A lot of times kids put pressure on themselves. They make a fumble or an interception. You have to have a short memory playing football. Exactly. I always tell them guys, listen, you know, you play each play one play at a time. You make a mistake, forget about it, keep going. Because if you dwell on that mistake, you're going to make another mistake. So just keep playing and having fun. The game is fun. You've been playing it since you was in the little league, most of you. So just keep doing what you're doing, and you're going to be fine. How much is game film still relevant, game film, as far as week to week, as far as the opponent's weaknesses? Because sometimes you can catch them off guard early with a special team's kick or a punt or going for it on fourth down. Is that still proactive in football? Oh, that's huge because think about it now. Imagine being in the classroom and you don't study for your test. You know, that's the way football is. You got to watch film. You got to watch the tennises. You got to sit there and watch what they like to do on third down, what they like to do on second down, what they like to do on first down. You got to be a student of the game, and that's off the field. So you got to be a verse cerebral guy when it comes to football. And usually in September, those first few weeks, those first games, they're trying to get their kinks out. You're trying to get your kinks out. They're trying to get their kinks out. Weather can play a factor. So I always call it the even page. It's wide open, especially those first few weeks in the fall. I think as a coach, the first thing you must understand is it's not a sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You're, you're, talking, you're not talking about playing one or two games. You're talking about playing up to 11 to 12 games. So once again, you got to keep in mind, we're not sprinting now. You know, we're running the marathon on this thing, and we got to be patient with it. You talk about the process, Coach, going from week to week after you have a chance to exhale a little bit, see what you did right, see what you did wrong. Was that emphasized a lot at at Texas Tech and also Cincinnati? Oh, no question. You you have to sit back to be able to understand something. you got to look at it from afar and then look at it from a close distance. And when coming here to, to, to Hampton, I knew coming here, that they had good players here. I also knew they do a great job academically, and that was half the battle. Because a lot of programs you come into, especially being a new coach, you're dealing with all these academic problems. Well, that, that's not the case here at Hampton. Hampton's graduation rate is 79%, which is very high for, for an athletic, as, as, as a whole. So that was one of my battles that I'd already won. And then it was a matter of implementing the program as far as the weightlifting going. We got a great strength and condition coach in Luke Butler. He does a great job. And we got, once again, we got great coaches. So it's just a matter of everybody working together along with the academic staff with Mr. Winston and bringing everybody together. And, and our athletic director, uh, Eugene Marshall, overseeing all of it. So it's been a, it's been a great team effort. It ain't, and I, I tell people all the time, this is not Robert Prentice football team. This is Hampton University football team. This is this community's football team. This is the Alumni Association football team. So we all in this thing together. You're the steward of the team, though, right now. and That's a good thing. Yeah. You're the head steward. Now let's talk about some of the fun stuff, recruiting. You have a lot to recruit from. You're not far from Norfolk. You're not far from Newport News. Right, exactly. And I tell you, you know, that was, that's another thing that draw me here because we know about the 757. And we know what type of players and came out of here. You know, you're talking about Hall of Famers to, to all pro players. So I said... I told the guys, I said, one thing we want to do, when, when signing day is over, we want to sign more kids than any school in the state of Virginia. And we did that. We signed more 757 than any school in the state of Virginia. If you check the roster this year's signing class, we signed over seven kids, more than any school. And, and, I, and I pride myself on that because I told the fans when I got the job that we would be relentless when it comes to the 757. We visit every school. 66 schools, and we visit every school the first week out. We've had relationships. We're building relationships. Not only did we visit school, we wrote personal hand letters to each coach to let them know that we're very serious about the 757. And that's one thing, too, about coaches. They're creatures of habit, consistency, routine. Put that on your staff, put that on your players, and you all buy in the same system. Exactly. And then another thing we did was, our first thing was, not only do you, you build a relationship, it's just like somebody come to your house, you invite them in. We gave a coaching clinic that I think it was 83 757 coaches showed up to it, and we talked ball, and, fi- and uh, you know, we had a fish fish fry, and, and everybody sit around and got to know each other. Like the old ball, I call it old ball coaching, 
And one of the first guys that showed was Mike Smith, the legendary coach over at Hampton High School. And I thought that was big for, for to get all those guys together and continue our relationship, the great relationship that Hampton has with the 757 coaches. All right, 2018, we're in the season now. What are the basic goals? Is it week to week? Is it year one? How do you define goals? Well, you just get better. You get better, and you, and you work with technique and fundamentals and continue to get better. Very good. All right, final few moments here with uh, Robert Prunty, head football coach at Hampton University. And, of course, what is your advice for somebody that wants to be a pirate? And you're talking to the recruit right now. Right. What's, your, what's your advice to him? Right. Just keep believing in yourself and keep working hard and, and don't let nobody tell you what you can't do in life. It's all about, uh, folks, like we said, having a good attitude is important, too, because life is always going to have distractions before you step on the field. But if you're not right mentally, you can get injured. Exactly. And you got to take care of your body. That's important. Not only I see a lot of young men, they go in the weight room, they work hard, but nutrition is one of the most important things. Your body is going to give you what you put in it. All right, folks, I want to thank uh, all the great staff here, Jim Heath, and, of course, Robert Prunty, brand-new head football coach at Hampton, had a chance to interview him on radio and TV both, and hope he's around here for a long time. He played here for a couple years as well. Robert, all the best in 2018. Thank you. All right, Robert Prunty, I want to thank our great guest today, John Davis, the head football coach at the Apprentice School, and Robert Prunty at Hampton University as well. For Ray Price, happy September. Enjoy the month. I'm Greg Bicaveras. We'll talk to you soon.